What's up guys, Baker here. Today I'm back with a very exciting tutorial. Today I'm going to talk about the new feature, Content Aware Fill, but for After Effects. This was released in After Effects CC 2019 version 16.1. So make sure you're up to date if you want to use this effect. So many people are familiar with the Content Aware Fill feature in Photoshop, but now it is finally integrated into After Effects. So let's take a look at what this can do. We have a beach scene of some people walking, and uh, you can see some people in the background far away. And let's say they ruin your shot and you want to take them out. Well, there you go. They are gone, and it looks a lot more romantic. So let's quickly jump in and see how to do this. First, take your footage and drag it into the New Composition button. Let's go ahead and go to the composition settings and rename this to tutorial. Now if you look at your panels to the right and you don't see the content aware fill panel, go to window and content aware fill and it should pop up right here. So the way this works is you need to create an alpha channel by essentially masking out the parts that you don't want and then this will fill in those gaps based on the pixels and the frames around those alpha pixels. So the first thing you want to do is determine what duration of your footage you want to remove the objects. Do you want to do it for the entire clip? Do you want to do it for just a few seconds? It actually makes a difference in terms of analyzing time and render time and the quality of the solution. So I'm going to scrub through here really quick and um, everything looks okay to me. So I'm going to do the whole clip. It's only about five six seconds. And the first thing we want to do is take our pen tool, zoom in here, Let's go full screen and just mask out the people that you don't want. Now let's push M for mask, change this to none so we can see the entire clip and keyframe the mask path. Now I'm not going to worry about the people in the background for this tutorial, I'm just going to show you just this one instance, but you can do multiple masks. You can do, you know, 10 masks, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to go back in the timeline and just adjust our mask to make sure everything still fits. And move forward in the timeline and just keyframe your mask path. You can also do right click and track mask and this will track your mask automatically for every single frame but I think I can do this with only a few keyframes. So before you start the content aware fill, you want to make sure your mask encompasses the object the entire time, which mine does, so that's good. Let's go ahead and set this to subtract, and in this little preview window, you can see the area of the frame that the content aware fill is going to be applied. So for the settings, we have alpha expansion, that just expands the mask if you need it to. I would suggest expanding this just a little bit and I'll touch on that in a little bit later but this offers a little bit more wiggle room but it does slow down your uh, render time a little bit. Quick side note, I just want to mention that this isn't a dynamic process so if you ever change something in the future you'll have to redo this entire process. The way this works is it'll render out a PNG sequence of these frames and it'll act as a separate piece of footage that you can just use however you want. So anyways, the fill method, there's three options. You have object, surface, and edge blend. Object is going to be the most common. That's when you're going to have not only camera movement, but the object's going to be moving, the background might be moving. This will just fill in that object with the background and it works almost seamlessly every time. Surface is a little bit different. That's when you have, you know, the camera could be moving, but the item you want to remove is not moving relative to the background. And by background, I mean an actual surface, for example, graffiti on a wall or a stain on a shirt or a scar or a mole on a face. That's when you want to use the surface option. Edge blend just takes the pixels right on the edge of the mask and averages them and then just fills it in with pretty much a solid color. So you won't get any textures or patterns. So this is good for like, for example, text on a piece of paper or a white background or something. But in most cases, you're just gonna stay on object and uh, yeah. So the range, um, if you don't wanna do your entire clip, you just set your work area by using B and N or just adjusting these bars here. Or you can do the entire duration. I'm gonna keep it on work area. If for some reason you don't like the final result or maybe the object is taking up too much space and there's not enough data to fill in the area correctly, you can create a reference frame which gets opened in Photoshop 
and then you can manually fill in those areas using let's say the clone stamp tool and then that will be used as a reference frame for After Effects which can then modify and update its algorithm to make it more accurate. But in any case let's just go ahead and click generate fill layer and see what happens. So it'll start by analyzing each frame and the movement of the pixels and then it'll start rendering the PNG sequence. And there you have it. Now this couple walking in the back is totally gone. And the way that works is if I solo this layer, it's essentially the inverse of our mask that got filled in. Now because of this alpha expansion, this fill area is a little bit larger than the mask that we defined. So one reason why that might be useful is instead of having the fill layer on top, what if we brought this down to the bottom and we took our mask, pushed MM, and we feathered it a little bit, let's say three pixels. This will offer a little bit better blending between the, uh, the new footage and the original footage and you wouldn't be able to do that if your alpha expansion was exactly zero. You would start to get black edges like this or you would uncover the object you were trying to hide. So that's essentially it. I just want to do a quick tutorial on the basics of this effect. A couple things to keep in mind. This fill PNG sequence takes up a lot of space if you do a lot of clips or if you redo it a lot of times. To find out where this is stored, you can go to your Content Aware Fill Settings and the file path where it gets saved is going to be in the same folder as your project file and then there's going to be a folder called Fills. Another way you can find it is right click the PNG sequence, go to Reveal and Reveal in Finder. Now this example was a 720p composition and there wasn't a lot of new data and each frame is about 4 megabytes. So depending on your composition size, let's say if you were using 4K footage and you were doing a larger content aware fill per frame, each frame could be up to 10 megabytes and a 5 second clip at 30 frames per second would be a gigabyte and a half of storage. So just keep that in mind. Every now and then I would go to your folders and empty those files if you're not going to go back to that project. You can also go to your cache folder and uh, empty that occasionally. So I really hope this content aware fill for videos inspires you. I did see a few examples on Twitter the other day that I thought were worth sharing. This person's face was kind of erased and gave it a trippy feel to it. A more realistic example is this one where they wanted to remove this sign in front of the castle. And you can see the after footage on the right looks amazing. So that's about it guys. I hope you enjoyed and learned something today and I hope you mess around with this new content aware fill for After Effects. Feel free to share any projects that you work on and um, feel free to like and subscribe, comment if you have any questions and uh, hope you have a good one. Alright, peace!